New Testament has a number of really important expressions for Jesus. He's called the Son of God, the Word of God, the Wisdom of God, the Image of God. But the two most important themes are that Jesus is ontologically the eternal Son of God, Himself God, one with the Father, and He is, as the eternal Son, also the eternal Word of God. The word in Greek is logos, which can mean concept or reason or thought. When Aquinas analyzes these, he thinks of them sort of in a simultaneity so that they're kind of mutually corrective. From sonship you get begetting, and from word you get the idea of immaterial wisdom or immaterial knowledge. So the Son is the eternally begotten immaterial knowledge of the Father. Aquinas draws out an analogy here to our form of human knowing. So you and I think in immaterial ways in that we think abstractly. I see 15 people in a room, and uh, I abstract out from it that there are 15 of this kind of thing, a human being. And I can tell you in universal terms what's proper to a human being, rational animal, capable of laughter, capable of prayer, capable of free will, you know, free will actions. Okay, so we have universal concepts of singulars that we derive through abstraction, and we use those, you might say, inner words or concepts to think about the world around us. We can know ourselves, we can think about our own human nature, our own identity, through a concept that we, in a certain way, beget, that comes from us, that's a product of our mind. Okay, so Aquinas is thinking that in the life of God, the Trinity, where it is revealed that there is a procession of wisdom from the Father and a procession of love from the Father, the procession of the Son and the Spirit, respectively, it's best to understand the eternal begetting of the Son as immaterial, as the begetting of the eternal word, or concept you might even say, of the Father. But in this case, what's happening is that the Father is from all eternity communicating the very uh, life of God, His very being, all that He is essentially, to the Son, without in any way dispossessing Himself of that divine essence. So the Father is, in knowing Himself, then uh, eternally generating the Son as His begotten word and wisdom, the immaterial light or the immaterial truth, the immaterial uh, expression of the perfection of the divine essence of, the, of what the Father is. It's not that the Father becomes God by generating the Son, it's because the Father is eternally Himself God that He, in knowing Himself, is able to communicate the fullness of His deity to the Son, not by a choice because the Son's not something accidental to God that could be or not be, but this just is the mystery of what the Father is. He is an eternal gift. Um, he is an eternal uh, source of divine life for the Son and the Spirit. And the, and the Son and the Spirit are eternally, you might say, essential to the mystery of the Holy Trinity in that God is always Father, Son, and Spirit. Okay, so in the end, uh, the notion of Christ as Son and Word at the, at, the, at the sort of origin of it all, before He's the Son made man, before He's the Word made flesh, Jesus is eternally the, the divine light or wisdom of the Father, uh, begotten before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, as we say in the Nicene Creed. <laughs>